There is no way the EU is going to give us a better deal. The EU has welcomed, uh, obviously, the uh, continuous abject surrender of the British government led by Theresa May. And uh, it is not going to give us anything. It, it wants... Look, it, it is anxious to make it clear that uh, the, uh, per, the, the result of leaving the EU is damaging because it doesn't want other countries or factions in other countries to think, well, maybe we will get a good deal and, and leave. So there is no way that a good deal is, is achievable on a bilateral basis with the European Union. It might be after we've left. We can then go as a self-governing country and say, look, how about talking after a decent interval and passions have subsided. But there's no way that's on now. But equally, it is not no deal. WTO terms is a perfectly reasonable way of proceeding. Well, why and are we constantly... We do, we do far more trade. We, as it is, we do far more trade uh, with the rest of the world than we do with the European Union. But why are we constantly being told that a, a no deal Brexit would be, even by many Brexiteers, would be catastrophic? I don't think we are told that by many Brexiteers, there may be one or two who are misguided, but it is ludicrous. The WTO system is the basis for the bulk of world trade, and it works very well and very successfully. Does the British you know, elite establishment, the political, uh, you know, you know, wise, wise heads, do they not at some point have to accept the verdict of the British people? Well, we, we, we've already got the best of three. I mean, we've had two already. So, um, this is the third and hopefully final. I mean, as you know from my previous discussion with you, I'm, I'm not an enthusiasm of referendum. It's a bad way to make decisions on a very complex issue. Is that because, but, vote, but, is that because but, voters are too thick to understand it? No, no, absolutely well, why? not at all. Why absolutely. is it? When there's a binary issue, when there's a yes-no issue on something which is which is which crosses party lines, where people can't get a decision by how they vote in their local constituency, then by definition, referendum is the best way of resolving things. Yeah, but, well, that, that's, it's all proving, I'm afraid, a bit academic. I mean, I, we, we can have, we've had this debate on and off over the last two yes, years, but we we're have. now close to the conclusion... And it's very clear that there isn't a majority in the cabinet or in parliament for any of the options now available. I, I'm just trying to suggest a constructive way out of it. And um, what I'm saying is that I don't see how that resolves anything. Now, do you not also think that you, along with other Remainers, I would say Ramoners, those trying to overturn this decision, um, that actually you bear some responsibility, not the majority, uh, that has to go to the government, but do you bear some responsibility uh, for basically all, all of the long, drawn-out efforts to try and stop Brexit, the undermining of it, when actually if if people who'd voted Remain if they, uh, had, had actually united around the decision and said, yeah, we don't agree with the decision but hey let's make the best of it let's deliver a great brexit let's stand as a united nation and uh, and get the best deal we can do you not think that we might be in a better place now well I, what i would concede is this that, that if after brexit uh, the government had come back to me uh, and indeed people across the spectrum and said look we will stop treating this as a party matter we'll treat it as a national unity issue and we'll try to get a brexit which is acceptable to different shades of opinion, which would probably have been what we, in the jargon we call a fairly soft Brexit, then I think it might have worked. You say clean Brexit. Uh, Remainers uh, would say that's a crashing out of the EU. Uh, they say that would be an absolute disaster, a catastrophe is one of the words that has been used. Would it be a catastrophe? Well, Remainers have consistently used this highly exaggerated language. Uh, you will remember Project Fear before we voted to leave, when we were told that if the British people had the temerity uh, not to follow the orders of um, the Treasury, there would be a punishment budget and unemployment could go up by 800,000. All of this turned out to be nonsense. Uh, so I think we should take their warnings of disaster with a pinch of salt. Isn't the simple solution actually to get rid of the Prime Minister? She was a Remain campaigner, although, albeit sort of fairly on the fence, uh, who, who was uh, leading Brexit. Perhaps it would be better to have uh, somebody who was a Brexiteer in Number 10 able to negotiate with a little bit of conviction. Isn't it about time that those 48 letters went in? You put the Tory party, perhaps the country, out of its misery and uh, removed Theresa May from Number 10. Well, I think you make a very good point about a Remainer leading the um, negotiations. I think that has been a consistent problem. That if you um, recall, the Prime Minister gave an interview to Andrew Marr after Chequers 
uh, was proposed, at which point she said that um, people voted with their heart, and essentially that her job was to ameliorate the decision voters had made. Uh, people like me who voted to leave uh, voted with our heads as well, because we believe the opportunities for Brexit are so much better than remaining uh, tied to the failing European Union's economic model, which um, is not leading to economic growth, has let down many EU countries, uh, and is making us poorer every year because it is a bad model. It's an outdated model. So having a Remainer lead the negotiations has led to the wrong approach. It's led to an effort to um, keep us as close to the EU as possible, rather than recognising the opportunities lie away from that. The highest vote uh, in our democracy's history was to leave the European Union. It would be scandalous if such an important democratic result were ignored or frustrated by those who never believed in it in the first place. If you were in the Cabinet now, unlikely to see you in a Tory Cabinet, I realise, as a Labour peer, but if you were in the Cabinet, would you back this deal? Uh, of, of course I wouldn't, because uh, the danger that uh, Theresa May's in now is that she's going to please neither side. The Brexiters uh, quite rightly say this isn't Brexit because it keeps us in a, a state of vassalage, having to do what Brussels tells us, but with no say. And I don't think that's what people voted for two years ago. But to people like me, our response is, well, the right thing is to put this to the people and see whether, on reflection, they think that rather having than paying uh, £40 billion, pounds, as you say, for very little in return, the better thing to do is simply to stay in the European Union. So I think she's going to be killed by both sides. But you're saying the Remainers themselves, they, they will not be keen to vote this through either? Well, we'll be voting against it too, and the Labour Party is virtually certain to vote against it because it doesn't meet our requirements that we should stay fully in the single market and the customs union. So why, OK, so, so why so my, do you so think... My reading of it is that she simply hasn't got the vote, so it's going to go down by quite a margin. So she may or may not get this through her cabinet. She may or may not survive the day without any resignations. There's talk that actually she squared it away with enough people and a sort of, look, you know, the alternative is so much worse. She brings it to Parliament. Everybody is saying she can't get this through Parliament. So why is she going to bother? Well, I, I, she thinks that she's got no choice because after all she committed herself to getting a deal and uh, the government's now hoist on its own petard because remember it spent the whole summer telling us that uh, the consequences of no deal would be do you remember the six weeks supply of medicines no planes taking off no food in the shop having done that herself so she did her own project fear indeed she did much bigger project fear than George Osborne and David Cameron did two years ago she now has no choice but to do the best deal that she can get out of Brussels and pay them the, the money that they say they need in okay. return. Under this plan, we would need the permission of the European Union and the European Court of Justice to leave. Yes, we, we put into the, we've been put into the room now of the customs union. The door has been locked and the key has been given to the EU and they will let us out when they're satisfied that we can get out. And, you know, I think you only have to look, and I know the Prime Minister says only a temporary arrangement, you only have to look at what happened to Turkey. Turkey entered a customs union arrangement on a temporary basis with the EU 25 years ago, and they're still there they, because the, the, what was you were meant to transition to never happened. And I think the, the, the Prime Minister has simply rolled over to the EU negotiators. They want to keep Britain tied to the EU because they don't want us to have the freedom to uh, go around the world, do our own trade deals, look for those expanding economies of the world and uh, try and uh, get into those markets. They don't want us in competition with them and they have found a, way, a mechanism of doing so. What is your best guess on what's going to happen now, whether there would be cabinet resignations or whether uh, the, the likes of you and the ERG, the European Research Group led by Jacob Rees-Mogg and other Eurosceptics, whether they have enough votes to defeat this in Parliament, even if the cabinet does approve? What's, what is your... And it is a guess, I realise that. What, what do you think is going to happen? It is. I mean, I don't know. I, I, certainly a lot of cabinet ministers in the past have expressed their support for any... Um, a move to keep uh, the United Kingdom together and have been said that they'll be appalled at any decision which would split the United Kingdom up, which this deal will do. Um, so 
we'll, we'll look to see how they they behave now that they once they see the shape of the deal. We don't have enough members of parliament, I think, to get a hard Brexit through. So if Brexit, Sammy not hard and Brexit, the others, Brexit. well, a Brexit. If Sammy, I'm, gonna, I'm going okay, to okay. pull people up tell on that off. every yes, time. Tell me <laughs> but if Sammy and some of the others vote this down, and who knows, I might join them. But we have to be absolutely certain that we will then get the clear. Brexit that we actually want and there's no certainty about that. My reaction to this when I saw the the actual text was was I, I I mean not even horror. I don't think I even got as far as horror. It was it was simply shock. This deal is no question at all not Brexit. It's not just that. It's worse than Brexit. It leaves us under basically all the auspices of the European Union without any say. Uh yes. <laughs> You're right. Uh it is extraordinary how we've got to this situation, and uh, it, uh, yeah, I suppose is Brexit in name only. And uh, I can't find this huge body of members of Parliament who are going to support it. And how on earth is it going to go through the House of Commons? But this is, I mean, this is the thing. In terms of actually what happens next, um, I say, we're talking to uh, just Ian Doug Smith just a second ago about these letters going in. Uh, it, it's quite clear that there there have been letters going in and more expected uh, to go in today. We could see a leadership election, well, certainly a vote of confidence triggered as early as today or tomorrow, could we not? Well, that could happen at any time, of course, and could, could have happened before. If this, if she genuinely believes this is the best deal, she she doesn't believe in her country, she doesn't believe in her own politicians, and she definitely doesn't believe in the British people, does she? <laughs> I find it difficult to disagree with you, um, but it, it, we will have to see whether other members of Parliament take the, the same... You. Have you have you um, put a letter into the 1922 committee yet? That is something that um, I think most people, MPs, would say to you is a matter that they um, a I private think, matter. I think that's a yes, isn't it? Uh, it's not a yes. It's not a no. It's not. I mean, not telling you. She's not the problem, Julia. Brexit is the problem, and. All of the people who've been saying she should have done this, she should have done that, she's done a terrible job, they haven't actually brought forward a plan that could have been negotiated. Yes, they have. They haven't. They, they have. Haven't. Canada There's Plus, 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 uh, anything Canada is better. Plus doesn't work and it doesn't give you, it doesn't protect the peace process in the border in Northern Ireland. So I think she's, look, she's doing the best. Uh, it's clearly not good enough. It's not good enough for people on the Brexit side because, frankly, it's not Brexit. And it's not good enough for people like me because I'm basically saying, what is the point of doing this when you're, we're going to take a big hit? And Donald Tusk, I thought it was interesting, even he, even though they have absolutely routed the UK in the negotiations, he was honest enough to admit this is lose-lose. There are no winners in this. But the big loser... I don't care if it's Theresa May. The big loser is the United Kingdom and our future. But so you're you're saying the only way to resolve this is to have another referendum. Well, look, let's let's go with two of the likely outcomes of that referendum. One, another close remain and uh, sorry leave win. Two, another close remain win. How does that resolve anything? Well, I'm I mean, if, no, if, if, if not... remain if remain wins narrowly, even if that were the case, they're not going to win by sort of seventy percent, are they? If remain win narrowly, you know perfectly well there's no reason why leave voters should accept that. We'll have to go for best of best of three, then maybe best of no. five. And if leave win, people like you, you're still not going to accept the verdict. No, you're still going to say we're all I... ignorant, stupid, bigoted, racist, and didn't know what we were doing. Well, the first thing, Julia, let's have a serious argument. I've never, ever, ever said that about anybody. That's the first thing. So take that back and then we can continue. I've never said that and I don't believe that either. I understand why a lot of people voted leave. However, I, none of us know what would happen if there was a new referendum on the outcome of the negotiations. But I'll tell you what, we did some polling overnight, which I think is being published later today, and I think there is a big movement on this. I think the public are saying this now. And frankly, Julie, you should be saying this too, because this is so different to what was promised. This latest news in the last couple of moments that uh, all the Tory whips have been told to return to Westminster immediately uh, might suggest that something is afoot and that those 48 letters have now gone in. Um, absolutely. I mean, I've um, had so many people, you know, the last 
few weeks of telling me that um, they've had enough um, our Prime Minister must go but, but very interestingly yesterday um, I had a conversation over the phone with a current government minister who said they've had enough and they're also putting a letter in so you know when ministers start putting letters in you know that um, you know um, it's time for it to go uh, well, I mean, this is uh, this is the issue, though, is it even if there are enough letters that go in, it's not guaranteed that she will lose a vote of no confidence. Is it, or is it your view that, as many have been saying, that there are an awful lot who may not wish there to be a vote of no confidence, we don't want to precipitate it, but once it happens, given that the party rules, bizarrely, say that she uh, can't be challenged again in the next year, that they will want to take advantage of this one-time opportunity to oust her? Completely. I mean, um, back in July when I, with a couple of other colleagues, was working on trying to get letters in because, you know, we, this is straight after checkers when we thought this is a non-deal, you know, this is not checkers that um, the public voted for. We had a, a, sort of a list of people who um, sort of submitted it. We had the middle list of people who said they don't want to be the ones putting it in, but they will um, vote against her when it goes to vote no confidence. And then we had the others who, um, who said no or they were thinking about it. So I, I, I'd be very surprised if she won a vote of no confidence, in all honesty. If she did win a vote of no confidence, um, also it's worth bearing in mind that, you know, her deal will not pass through the House. You know, Labour have said, DUP have said. So I think she's a goner anyway um, in a, a position. You needed to have a leadership challenge in June 2017 after she failed you at the general election. You needed to have one when she first presented checkers. Yeah, the only reason are, there is a leadership challenge is because trouble. she's so darn useless at the job. No, I, I would say that we, we've got to deal with situation as we find it. It's no good going back over what might have been. We are where we are, and 133 days to go till we could crash out. This is not the time for, for people to be saying, oh, let's just step back and have two, you know, a month or so of a leadership challenge. It's, it's bonkers. But That's hold on a minute. We, we know this wasn't what the British people meant by Brexit, because we didn't think that we'd have someone negotiating on our side who was basically negotiating for the interests of the EU rather than for us. Of course that's not what Leave voters uh, like no, me no, voted no, I for. I don't agree with you there. Just a minute. I, I, I wouldn't agree with you there. I don't think she's been negotiating for the EU. I really? What has happened? No. Tell me Why one concession she's got from the EU. Tell me one. That... Tell me one. <laughs> Just one. I mean, it's a it's a five hundred and eighty five page document. Here. Can you find it's one concession? Five hundred and eighty five. Okay, so they are saying that they have made a small concession on uh, on on things to do with the backstop. They've certainly said that they've made concession? concessions on things to do with trade. Oh, it's a very technical document about the backstop to the backstop and the arrangement and the arrangements. If you think about it, for the European Courts of Justice, they at the start of this process were insisting everything would be done by the ECJ. In the, in the majority of areas, it, there are agreements that they will have tribunals, independent tribunals, to set things up. So you wanted a specific oh, example. I mean, th if that counts as a concession in your book, Sarah, you, I mean, come on. You know, if you were going into an operating theatre, you would expect the surgeon to, to have set out what the operation is and the risks and the benefits. You wouldn't expect the operation, the, 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 the surgeon, to be saying to you two years earlier, well, we don't know whether we're going to remove a few toes or your whole leg. And that's effectively what we're doing. We're going into the operating theatre with this major Brexit surgery based on a consent form signed two years ago where nobody knew which particular type of Brexit it was. 